Hi, this is a review video for round one. I wanted to record this video to help people to do better with the simulation. So we're going to review the simulation and we're going to talk about some things that happen, some ideas to improve your performance. And so the first round was run last night and we have another round coming up uh, in a day or so. And before you, you know, you work on a round, you may want to um, try some practice games. You may want to uh, read a student user manual. You may want to look at, I provided a video for some help. I also, on uh, Blackboard, I'll bring it over here, I had this, oops, what, I had this helpful hints for Zoom where I go over, you know, uh, eight basic things to do to help improve your score with you know watching the video is number eight but also a lot of good hints about you know profit margins and production plans and stuff so you, that's my personal experience of how to do better in the simulation that I posted and emailed everybody um, about the simulation and also you know we have um, January 3rd has passed so we we have a new a new round coming up on the 5th. That's what's due on Friday. So we need to prepare for that. So, okay. First up on looking at the profit margins per team, we had one team make more than $60 million in profits in round one, and we had three teams better than 55,000, and two more teams at um, the 50,000 mark. So those are excellent, excellent. Uh, if you made over 40 million in profits, you're doing pretty well. There are a couple teams here. We have two teams that um, did re didn't even break the 25 million dollar mark on profits. And they need, they, they need really those teams really need to look at what they're doing and focus a little bit more on their gameplay. All right. If you look at points per team, you notice that the teams that have the highest profits also are the teams with the same teams with a lot of high, uh, high amount of points and the teams that scored uh, low lower on the profits have less points so there is a direct correlation between points per round and profits and because if you're an MBA student the whole point of business is to maximize shareholders wealth the whole point of business is to make money you don't go in business um, for you know, if it's for-profit business, that's why we call it for-profit. I'm not talking about the non-for-profit businesses. For-profit business is what you're studying in business school as an MBA student, and you haven't really understand the concept that businesses have to maximize their profits. That's why the simulation is, should be very critical and important to you because this is going to really reinforce that you have to maximize shareholders' wealth. You have to do whatever you can, and you have to know what things you do when you run a business to maximize your profits. And that's why this simulation is so critical to your education because some of you um, may not really understand that fully. And you shouldn't be able to graduate from MBA program without understanding how that concept works. Uh, so points are a combination of overview. These are the, the sum of your over, overview points, which are really an analyst balance scorecard, which we'll go over in a minute. And we have, you know, a number of teams. Look, I'm looking for, um, I'm looking for you guys to do, let's see. I'm looking for you guys to do uh, 2,500 points. Some teams are at 1,000 points. You're almost halfway there. Not quite, but 40% of the way there. Some teams have really killed it in points the first round. Uh, and other teams uh, did very well. Uh, basically, you want to make at least 450 points per round to guarantee an A on this project, or at least 425 points per round. So anybody over 400 points, which is majority of the class, except for three teams, did well. Okay, stock price. So stock price is a reflection of maximizing shareholders' wealth. How do you get stock price to increase? One, you increase your profits or, um, and or you reduce your amount of outstanding shares. So we have a big, we have $19 all the way down to $9. So everybody increased their earnings per share, just like uh, everybody was able to increase their revenues and increase their profits, but you're competing against each other. So the teams up here are doing much better than the teams down here. So you're, you have to be, you're focused, you're competing in the industry. So your success is measured against 
how you do relative to other teams. Now, if you look at sales per, per class, we have, you know, this company down here definitely needs to reevaluate their sales. Student user guide will help with that. And these teams up here have really capitalized and done very well on their sales. But remember, sales aren't the whole picture. Um, I often tell students, I say, I have two, t two companies. I'm going to give you a company for free. Which company would you rather have? One company has $5 billion in sales. Another company has $100 million in sales. And everybody says, oh, the company with the $5 billion in sales. And then they say, oh, now I've given you the company. But I should tell you now that you own the company, that the company with $5 billion in sales has $16 billion in losses per year. And maybe it's the post office. You don't know. The other company of the $100 million in sales, they have an $80 million profit per year. Now, do you want to change your mind? Does anybody want to switch companies? So you see, it's not always sales, it's profits. Okay, earnings per share. And we have one team here with the highest earnings per share, which is great. And so we have a big, you know, a fanning out of different levels of earnings per share. And again, this is based on um, the amount of outstanding shares, and the amount of profits the company makes, which is directly going to be related to, you see how the top team here is in, this is in stock price, see how the top teams here in stock price um, are the top teams here in uh, earnings per share. Okay. All right, so let's go to, um, This is the uh, leaderboard for the class. And you see that number of teams made over 800 points, which is fantastic. Uh, any team over 400 points is doing well. So we only have really three teams that are struggling. Uh, now, if we look at profit margins, I had said in that hint, that hint email that you need, you're starting off at 40% profit margins. So all these companies here really failed to escalate their profit margins significantly. These companies actually went backwards in their profit margins. So whenever a company, if you ever follow the news when earnings are released, whenever a company disappoints in profits or earnings per share or in profit margins, the stock price gets killed. So you guys are basically killed your stock, your company stock price this round. Companies that were able to greatly improve their profit margins did, did very well in uh, their points. And here's the percentile rank. This percentile rank is like, you know, if you ever took an SAT and you get a percentile rank of your score, this is how well you did it compared to the last 3,000 other teams that played the simulation. So some teams are doing very well in the 90 percentiles of gross profit. Uh, stock price, uh, uh, we've talked about that before. Return equity is the amount of profits you make relative to the equity in your company. So you want, this is really the return for the money invested. Uh, total points. This is a cumulative. This is what your score is based on. So in round two, your round two points will be added to your round one points, and your total points is what your score is based on. So some companies are uh, closing in quickly on the 2,500 points, and we have five more rounds to go. Operating profit margins here is a careful consideration of how you advertise. You don't want to advertise more than you need to because you're just wasting money and reducing your net profit operating profit margins. Earnings per share we talked about. Return on assets is your profits in relationship to your assets. So how much profits do your assets generate? The more efficient your assets are, the more uh, higher this will be. Net profit margin uh, is after uh, taxes and interest. So if you borrow too much money and pay a lot of interest, that will affect your net profit margin. Revenues per share, just your total revenues divided by your outstanding shares. So again, this can be improved by buying back stock and reducing your outstanding shares. Total asset turnover looks at how much your relationship of sales to assets. If you had, you know, two million in in sales and five hundred thousand assets, your total asset turnover would be four. Because you want your assets to turn over more sales. Okay. So let me look at the I played a demo and I completed round one in the demo. And I just want to show you how you should tackle round two. So in round two, you should review your overview points. So for, you know, you this is year one. And in year two, I, I um, actually completed the first two years. I'm in year three. So it looks at year one results compared to year two results. And for every uh, year over year point I've improved or percentage I've improved, I improved 41%, I get 41 points. 
So for all the ratios, this is why it's important to know your financial ratios. And that's why we teach you financial ratios in MBA 501, MBA 502, MBA 504. So there's a number of classes where we talk about financial ratios. So you should know them by now. And you know your profit margins are so critical. So here, my profit margins went from 55 to 50%. So all my profit margins declined in, in round two which gave me, uh, I lost points for my profit margins, which transferred into return on equity. So I wasn't as good on return on equity and return on assets because my profits went down. So you gotta be very careful. Make sure your profit margins are higher in the next in round two compared to round one. Uh, my market capitalization went up. Now my forecasting, my forecasting two cars I forecasted perfectly last round. So I'm not gonna make a lot of points in forecasting. I'm just trying not to lose a lot of points. So once you make your initial uh, gain from or forecasting perfectly, you're just trying not to lose many points in this area. And I invested in operational investments, which gave me a um, 100 point bonus. And I had a surplus. So you always want to maintain enough cash to have a surplus. Now, round two might be harder to earn a lot of points in if you've done very well in round one, because you're competing, you know, sort of like uh, you're competing against yourself. Your grades from year one compared to your grades from year two, if you want to look at it in the school analogy. So your year over year change, you really have to work hard to beat yourself because not only are you are trying to beat all the competitors and you're trying to steal market share from your competitors and outthink your competitors in the simulation, you're also trying to use that to, to improve your year over year points. Okay. So that's my... Um, quick review. Now, if I'm going into this is if I was going to go into year three, I'd also go to the assessment page and I'd look at my assessment scores. If I have if I don't have five score five stars in something, if I didn't do excellent in something, I should be reviewing the suggestions to <clears throat> improve my performance. So you really should look at the self assessment to see if you want to know, sometimes a student said emails me and say, how did I do in the simulation? And I said, um, go to the assessment tab and read over the assessment tab. That will show you in multiple ways how you did. In a star category, one through, f one through five. In a performance measure, in a percentile measure, in a score measure. So this is how you did in the simulation. Review your charts. Specifically, look at your um, performance chart. And check out what's really important at the bottom. You want to check out your market potential versus actual sales. So here we see that I met my potential. Yellow is my sales. My sales met my potential. But here in Sedan, my sales were 3,000. My potential was 3,400. So I let 400 cars go to a competitor. Poor forecasting. Same thing for truck and luxury. I under forecasted and I had much more demand. So these cards where I only sold 2,000 vehicles because that's all I built, the other 300 cars went to a competitor. So make sure that you uh, focus on your... Uh, forecasting as well. And that chart helps a great deal. In the industry page, you can go and check out your competitors to see how your competitors, what they did, who's number one, what were their choices, what is their market potential, what is their profit margin. So here's when you do industry research to see what changes you should make. Uh, you could you could review your financial uh, statements and then go and redo your car for the next round. Now it gets harder. If you didn't make your operational cost reductions, you're going to need these because customers' expectations increase every year. So you have to meet an ever-increasing demanding customer. And the price of the car only increases slightly, not enough to make up for the, the full uh, increase of expectations. So that's why these operational cost reductions are important. So and that. So you just start over and you do the sales, your marketing and production. And remember in production, you can reuse your leftover inventory. And when you do forecast, you don't want to have, you want to have a zero in excess or shortage here. You don't want to overbuild or underbuild. And operational investments are very important to keeping the uh, company profitable. All right. Um, okay, so that is my quick 15-minute video, uh, just reviewing round one, giving some hints on how to do better in round two. And a lot of times, to do better, you have to read that student user guide. You have to maybe, you feel free to do as many practice rounds as you want to, to sharpen your skills and, and, keep, and can increase your competitiveness. Okay, that's it for me. Good luck on the next round due on Friday the 5th, and I will be talking to you soon.